Hunter out here. I'm with my buddy Jay with Gorilla Ammo. Uh -huh. so, so, anybody been reading Range Hot knows that I do a tremendous amount of ballistics testing. So, Gorilla, which I use a lot of their 556 stuff in my reviews as well as Trainer Black, sent me some of their relatively new. Yeah, yeah, we released it in the shop show. Four or five months old. Relatively new. Oh, brand new. Yeah. Silverback defensive ammunition. Now, the very latest entry in my ballistics test is how that ammunition formed. Which it is actually very impressive enough so that I have switched out all my 9mm mags to Silverback. Nice. And I mean, so you're not, so you see I'm not lying, <laughs> there she is. There you go. But this is the man. So I'd like to get a little bit of his perspective on the Silverback and then Gorilla in general. The All right, sounds great. So what we did when we rolled out with the Silverback line, well, I'll back up a minute. We had a really good niche in the 300 Blackout market. Okay. We did really, really well in the 300 Blackout subsonic. We're killing it. And that market started to dip a little bit. We said, all right, what's the next big thing? What are we going to do next? So we looked at the marketplace and said, solid copper. I got an experience in machining and manufacturing stuff. We can make solid copper projectiles. We're too young of a company to invest in millions of dollars in equipment to make uh, solid copper, or not solid copper, but uh, copper jacketed projectiles. We're just not there yet. But what we can do is this, these turned projectiles. What you're able to do with these is you can tune the projectile to do what you want to do in a matter of minutes on the CNC machine. We can go shoot this in the gel and say, okay, well, we didn't really like that. That opened up too quick or that opened up too slow. It penetrated too far. We can go back to the CNC machine, make the slit a little longer, change the annealment process, and then go back and shoot gel again and see what it does. So we looked at... d and &E lab right yeah, there? right there. Right there in the facility. So we did, uh, we looked at the FBI protocol for expansion and penetration because we know that the FBI knows a lot about what kills people. Right? <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, we looked at the FBI protocol and tuned these projectiles to meet or exceed the requirements. So it met the penetration requirement. It did. But it greatly exceeded the expansion requirement. Right, right. Um, something that you touched on about all solid top projectiles. Yeah. There are some states now where you cannot have lead core bullets. Right, right. You know, they yeah, all kind of green. Yeah. yeah. So, and I see a lot of companies are coming out with solid copper hunting projectiles. Right. But because of the state law, yeah. you know, lead is poisonous because it comes from the ground or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a politician. I don't make the rules. Right. But, I, you know, I can see the fact that, I mean, the ammunition performed very well. Right. In my gel. Now, when I tested it, I run it through several different nominal handguns. It is a long, kind of odd-shaped, large, is. aggressive jacket yeah. offer. But, you know, the one thing that I initially my concern was, how reliable is it going to be? Right. Now, it has got a little bit of a taper before right. that aggressive cavity. But, you know, through my Colts, my Glocks, CZs, it ran great. I didn't have any kind of misfeeds. Have you experienced any particular ammunition or uh, handgun manufacturer that you've had an issue the with? The only gun that we've with. had a little bit of an issue with is in 45. We've got two different 45 loads. And on the 230 grain uh, FBI in a September 1911, had a little bit of an issue. Changed loading length a little bit. We're all in the races. But it was only maybe five or 10,000 rounds that were affected by that. On. When I tested the 45 load that y'all sent me, I was actually in the process of reviewing an inlet right. 1911, okay. which was built to the original 1911, oh, all the way to not a tape, it's a uh, not a hybrid lip, but a full, it would call a ball round lip. I got you. And uh, I shot it through that, which if it was going to miss in anything, it, 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 it ran great out of that great. 1911 A1. I shot it through several of my 1911s and a couple blocks, changing 45 auto. I never experienced any kind of problem. Right. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Kim. And, and I probably shouldn't say that, but I used to do some reviews for them. Right. I, I had trouble with some of their guns running correctly. Right. And sent it back and forth. And they kind of, I never could get it ironed out. So if somebody tells me, well, I had a little bit of issues feeding in the Kimber, I really wouldn't. I, me, I would put a lot of stock in that. Right. But I know you as a manufacturer, you have to kind of remain neutral. Yeah, we as wanted far to as work in as many factory guns as possible. Understandably so. When we found out that issue, we changed the loading length and fixed it. It's not really a big deal. I am, you know, I am a huge fan. I've always liked this. You know, I've been using the 556 Green and Black now yeah. for about two years yeah, in yeah. reviews. Yeah. Uh, the Silverback is my new favorite to carry around, awesome. you know, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. No problem. I really love the new round that you've introduced, and uh, I hope to continue to keep working with you in the future. Awesome. I appreciate okay. it. Hey, Thank you, brother. One more thing. Yes, sir. I want to send you some of this. We're going to black out 205 grain subsonic. It's, it's sub. It's subsonic. You know that's been the problem with subsonic game. It's been 300 blackout. You do the spans, it stops right now at 18 inches of gel. We're working on engineering to get the stoppage as well. So, 
Yeah, yeah, man, that's awesome. We'll send you some of that flavor. Is this is this CNC machine there? It is. Same thing. So you're actually CNC machining the actual bullet. Yeah, we've got a, a Swiss screw machine. And our stock coming goes in on one side, and bullets come out. On wow, the man, that's pretty cool, you know. Yeah, a lot a of the process. a lot of the ammunition manufacturers are really not ammunition manufacturers. They're component assemblers. Exactly. Yeah. So y'all were machining the bullet, loaded it all right there. So yeah. this is. So everybody understands, this is not reman ammo. No, it's, it's not, not factory. Used, no. This is factory brand new ammunition, and it's actually pretty important. It is. Yeah, we we looked at the market and what everybody else was in copper, solid copper projectiles, and just tried to get a little bit under that because we to present a good value to the consumer. So I think we've done a pretty good job. I'm I'm happy with it. I'll, I've I've shared the ammo with several of my friends who run it through their ARs or pistols, what have you. It's all worked great for us. It is my go-to standard when I'm testing a rifle for action. Awesome. And you saw the groups I oh, got, yeah. you know, with the crazy. double D Armory yeah. SST, you know, five shot group you cover up with a with a nickel. Awesome. And I'm 42 years old, so it's about as good as I can do. Awesome. Well, thanks for stopping thank by. You, Jay. Good to always visit with you. Yes, sir. I greatly appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Yes, sir.